Hey guys, LP here, and uh, looks like this is uh, part five of a six-part series on uh, conversations or talking with a socialist about preparedness. Believe it or not, it was all good. It was all good. In, uh, in today's episode, it's going to be all about economic collapse. Uh, and as you guys know, this is, that's my major prep. Um, great conversation with the young man. Didn't have any problems with it, with it at all. We clearly have, uh, we're ideologically di uh, divergent of each other's belief systems. But it was nice to still have the ability to sit down and have a logical conversation in an adult manner. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. If you're not into that, swipe away now. We'll talk to you later. Uh, also, this uh, these video series brought to you by PrepStock, PrepStock.net. Go there, buy your tickets. It's going this October 12th and 13th, Nebo, North Carolina. It's going to be pretty freaking awesome. We're already uh, putting together the list of stuff that we're going to be giving away. Now, unfortunately, we are in the red. And that's an accounting term, which means bad. So we've got an affiliate link set down there for uh, Amazon. Uh, no, it's not mine. But uh, it's for like coffee, paper cups, stir sticks, sugar, you know, things like that. So that we can make sure that everybody's comfortable and, uh, and enjoying prep stock. Hopefully you guys will be there. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm going to stick this in every one of the videos. Just got back from filming the intros. Watch the chat. Watch the chat that's on the screen. It's absolutely hilarious. All right, here we go. Uh, we Unfortunately, we have to continue doing, we have to continue helping Ukraine. We have to. I agree. Yeah. We're, we're in way too deep to just back out. It's not about a betting man's game. Uh, it's about uh, if we don't continue to uh, help Ukraine, then we will eventually end up with American troops on the ground. It will happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, la last week there was a special forces operations that was happening uh, uh, 45 miles ins inside of Poland, 45 miles uh -huh. from the Russian border. The Russians were not happy. There we go. Yeah, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's on my side. In the other room, the 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 son is playing on his VR headset, so I'm sure he's sucking up all my band. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, so okay. So back to the economic collapse, right? Do you? So I, I guess here's the thing: is if an ec economic collapse happens, right? Do you not think that it, markets would just shift to be what they can? Like. It, what, like I should mention, the stock market didn't exist. Giant corporations didn't exist throughout history, and people were fine, right? Society is okay. It, okay, so they they will, but the transition will be won't be as rapid as most people think it will be, and it will have an instantaneous effect on everything that American consumers consume. Yesterday, gas prices in my town went from three nineteen to three thirty nine uh -huh. over, and like in an hour, in an hour just because somebody said something about, you know, a dust storm in the Middle East or something like yeah, yeah. that, you know. Uh, you know, the corporations will play their game. They'll make their money for their, their shareholders. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but some of that's not driven by them. Some of that is is driven by geopolitical decisions as well as uh, things that happen in the stock market itself, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, uh, if you watch the, uh, uh, the numbers on crude, you can almost predict what's going to happen within the next 30 days because it only takes about 30 days uh, for the uh, uh, the fuel uh, the fuel numbers to change to actually reflect, yeah, yeah. reflect where they're going. Um, but yeah, it, it it to answer your question, it would it, it's not going to happen as quickly as you would think it would be. And in that period of time, there's a lot of room for people to start thinking bad thoughts and acting bad ways. You know. Um, you know, when, I mean, what, what happens What happens when somebody hacks the freaking social security system and someone can't get their SSI check? Yeah, yeah. I you mean, know what I'm saying? Of course. It's not I, about I, grand law. I, I there, agree. There's more, there's more people. There's more people that are in your age to my age range on social security than there are what people, what most people would call the boomers. Mm -hmm. You know, and what happens when somebody hacks that? And, and, and then, you know, Johnny Joe Schmo, who's been collecting Social Security because he got hit by a car when he was 12, you know, and he can't work now that he's 29. Uh -huh. And what happens when he can't get, get his check? You know what I'm saying? The kid's got no skills. He's got no life. He can't pay his bills. He can't do anything because 
so he's been on the government dole for so long. And 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 that's a shitty situation, excuse my French. No. But the reality is, okay. is that that person, desperate people do desperate things. Okay. Now, that can happen in three days. I mean, it can happen in nine days. It could happen in 15 days. Maybe he's the most patient kid on the, on the planet. But at some point, he's not going to be like, well, I'm just going to sit here and do nothing. He's not going to. You wouldn't. I wouldn't. You would yeah. do something. And maybe it's good. Maybe it's not good. You know, uh, the other question is like, what happens when the Walmart trucks stop moving? Yeah, you know, think... we've actually seen this happen. People freak the hell out. And it's it's more about it's it's more about panic than anything else. Uh -huh. We saw this in 2019 with the with the great toilet paper apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. You know, people just going nuts, empty in shelves. Prepper's plan, uh, a prepper's plan is to never be involved in any of that. All right, you slackers, listen up. Did you know that we actually have a shoot-no-shoot -shoot expert who's going to be speaking at Prep Stock? He's one of our lecturers, and he's going to tell us all about how to, how to do the things that we're supposed to be doing lawfully with our firearms, situations, and things of that nature. So if you have got your tickets for Prep Stock 2024, Nebo, North Carolina, 12th through the 13th of October this year, the sky is not going to fall. You're going to survive. The world will continue to spin. Go get them now. Link in the description. Sit back and go, well, I'm glad I've got a room full of toilet paper. I never have to worry about it. I still have toilet paper from back in 2019. Yeah. Wouldn't you know, the, I don't think wouldn't... I bought toilet paper in forever. I guess once again, though, that pushes. So I, I, I wouldn't call you a fear porn person, but I see the fear, right? The fear is that there's going to be a malicious actor or a malicious event. And instead of preventing it, you want to be prepared mm -hmm. for it, right? I think that's the main difference yeah, because exactly. I want to put all exactly. my energy into preventing it, right? Like, big, huge yeah. way for me to prevent corporations from doing fuck shit is to not have corporations, right? To yeah. not, not necessarily in an anarchist way, but in a nationalize all of them. And make everyone in a you know give democratic workplaces cooperatively ownership right because then you're uh, forced to have a community right you're not alienated from your labor you know everyone you work with you have the most power to ensure that there's things because you are directly affected if walmart was a co-op right and everyone that works there is also who shops there and needs it there's an incentive of those people to make sure walmart keeps running and if they you know economic collapse or whatever happens in the world well, it won't really matter because everyone already works there anyways, right? Like it's cooperatively owned. They can adjust very easily, yeah. you know, the labor value and the labor price because labor mm -hmm. value is directly determined by what it can be sold for. Uh, like especially gas is a huge one, right? I'm happy you mentioned gas because in America, gas is inelastic, right? It's a necessity. If you do not have yeah, gas, exactly. you cannot get to work, right? Therefore, it should be either given for free by the government, right? Or it mm -hmm. should be... Uh, cooperatively owned by the people nationalized, right? Yeah. For the reason that it is inelastic. You can you do so much damage holding that over someone's head. It's like holding water, you know? Like mm -hmm. if, if somebody will do anything for water. Yeah. And we call that abuse, right? Yeah. Or or whatever you want to call it. A, a unfair, it's torture, right? Whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. So the solution, at yeah. least to me, right? Instead of, like, yeah, I get being prepared for things. You should, start, you should have a little extra medicine of everything. You know, have all this stuff. You should build communal relations. I feel like it's way more, less fearful, right? I'm less fear pushing, and I'm more so. Let's let's come up with something to prevent. You know, what we can. Obviously, like yeah, a meteor hits, shit, shit changes. But like, you know, yeah, it's over. It doesn't matter how yeah. many guns you have. It's over. Yeah, yeah. So I I just think that's a a way to look at it, and right, and like yeah. I I understand where the fear comes from i think people innately have fear and it's probably like i don't know your political leanings like i said i'm not somebody who like is going to ever hate somebody just instantaneously for their political leanings but i feel like that's like a huge like you, we talk about generational right conservatives yeah. tend to have way more fear and this has been studied that was like hundreds of thousands of uh participants is yeah. when analyzed a conservative brain has much more fear right and is yes. is much more likely to not accept somebody like into that community or somebody comes knocking asking for mm -hmm. help you're going to assume the worst and uh i i, I, I just hope to like deprogram that right like yeah. i'm somebody who wants to yeah not i'm an optimist yeah well it's it's more trust but verify with with conservatives but i do i i've read the studies that you that you speak of yeah yeah okay? I, I 
I, I'm, I'm really human into uh, human interactions. Yeah. But I would ask you one simple question. Uh -huh. Based on your the ideology that you just threw at me, mm -hmm. do you think that's ever going to happen? I think it has. You, you think that the whole world has... No, I'm talking about like free gasoline for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Walmart being a co-op. So things like that have ha have happened, right? Like, um, you know, no, I'm talking about that specifically. Yeah, yeah, that has well, not in America, obviously not, because we are the imperial core, right? We we enact, yeah, we we counteract so, any semblance yeah. of of social welfare, right? Yeah. So, so with that said, if it's not going to happen in America, wouldn't it be prudent to pre prepare for the no? Problems because the that only reason that it doesn't problems bring. That those problems bring? No, because the only reason it doesn't happen is we don't fight for it. We're complacent. And I look to educate, right? No, you're not. I, I, you're, you're still talking ideology. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. want to talk about the politics of the United States of America. Yep. Is, is gasoline going to be given to every citizen? Not currently, but that doesn't, that's what I'm saying. I, I yeah. think it's better to you know, push the prepare, right? My preparedness I got you. would be advocation so, so, for so, a better world. So I'm going to prepare until that better world comes, but... Like so, when does it come? I want to. I want to. I want to set up my food stock so of course, I can get yeah, at least and I that think that's far. Fine. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. I want to. I want to know how far, and that's the problem. That's the problem with, with the. I wouldn't even. I don't even like to use the word uh, problem. It's a concern. Preppers actually have concern for people that don't. Um, that, that it's not that they don't believe what they believe. It's just that they feel. They, they 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 feel that people are like walking around with blinders on you know and and hoping things will get better uh -huh. you know and talk, you know and, and and these are the same people that talk about things getting better all the time yeah but they never actually do anything about it they think that silently you know i hate and and uh and i'm not poking any fingers because it doesn't look like you're in a basement but you know you know uh talking from their basements on yeah. youtube and twitch things that that's somehow somehow secretly kind of manipulating the environment around them to make it a kinder, gentler utopian place it just doesn't happen it doesn't happen because every human being has the in, innate desire to be more than what they are to be more than their community you know to to stand out you know yeah. there's nothing we can do about it there's nothing we can do about it you i know i you so, say that but the world is the safest it's ever been. You know, the, the least amount really? of... Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% violent ago. crime globally is... I'm, I, I'm, I'm tracking with you. I'm tracking with you. Listen, statistics are fine, but two weeks ago, a bullet went flying through the front of the shop window that I work in. Yeah, but... And I live in a tiny little town. Yeah, but once again, that's like anecdotal evidence. Like I can also say that if I go outside, look, the earth is flat. You know? But you just said evidence. Anecdotal. Yeah. You can't just dismiss it. It happened. It passed within three feet of my head. You're right. But like I said, I could also go outside and be like, anecdotal evidence tells me the earth is flat. My own experience, it's flat. But I know it's not, right? Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Because this conversation is about to be over. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say, like, I can go outside I, I, I and have my own that, evidence, there's... right? I'm just, the point I'm making <laughs> by that is that, like, we can zoom out. Like, thank the, you know, whatever, that we have instant communication. But we live in the communication age, right? We've we've gone past yeah. the information age, and now I would call us in like the the you know techno feudalism, whatever. That's like Yanni's Verifiki said that, which is the idea that like okay. we live in an era now. We've gone past you know the uh, communication information age, and now we live in an era where information is all controlled by like one thing. We still have a semblance of it, and that means that we can all connect to the same thing and instantly know big swaths, Wikipedia, whatever, right? There's yeah, big yeah. monoliths of of giant data we know instantly and scientific data is one of those right though it's a shrinking pillar with a lot of like covid misinformation or anti-vax or anti-science stuff right there's a it's a shrinking pillar but yeah. we can still use that to make scientific claims like stats about crime right we can look at the science pillar or the science whatever and institutions that still are somewhat semblance of of you know accountable and be like oh okay look mm -hmm. violence globally is down globally so those people, like I said, like me advocating for a better world, it's like, man, like people do want a better world. It has worked. Yeah. People have been advocating for a better world long before you were around. Oh, and they'll of course. Be doing the yeah. Same thing that, Dawn, we've crawled out of caves. Like I said, we crawled out of caves together to build a better world yeah. together. Yeah. So that's yeah, my, agreed. that's my, my big thing, right? Is I think preppers, uh, 
a lot of the prepper community focuses on the idea of like, man, I'm going to have to shoot my neighbor. Or if my, like you said, the neighbor comes knocking, asking for help. Yeah. Like what harm is there in me helping that person? You know? Yeah. Oh, no. And so, well, I, I think, I think we're b both looking at this from different perspectives. Okay. okay?